Hi everybody, uh, Physics Ninja here. Today I want to look at a collision problem, a 1D collision problem between a basketball and a tennis ball. So, we got a basketball. I want to make this collide with a tennis ball. Kind of the best way to do it, I mean, you can kind of bounce them like this. Um, a better way to do it is just to stack it one on top of the other. Put a tennis ball on top of a basketball and just drop it from a given height and see what happens. So let's go outside and test this out. So the first thing you notice, the tennis ball goes way higher than if you just bounce the tennis ball by itself. So now that we have some empirical data, let's go ahead and set the problem up and see how you solve for the maximum height of that tennis ball compared to the basketball. Okay, so tennis ball on a basketball physics problem. Let's first consider our system when we first set it up and drop it. So we've got our basketball, which is larger uh, and dark, and in green we're going to have our tennis ball. Uh, we're both going to drop them from the same, approximately the same height. Okay, so if you just start looking at the kinematics uh, before anything hits the ground, we simply have the basketball and the tennis ball moving down. And right before hitting the ground, they're going to have some velocity V. Okay, we're going to denote the masses as M1 and M2 respectively for the basketball and tennis ball. And then Let's consider what happens when the basketball first bounces. It's the first one to hit the ground. If that collision is elastic, then the velocity is simply going to change directions. You don't lose any kinetic energy in that first collision. But we still have the tennis ball kind of going down at that specific instant. Now I've separated them, and it just makes the problem a little bit easier to track. And then after, there's going to be a collision between this tennis ball and the basketball. And really what we want to know is, what are their final velocities after the collision between the tennis ball and the basketball? So we're going to den denote a coordinate system where the up direction is going to be positive. And we're going to take the approximation that the mass of the basketball is way bigger than the mass of the tennis ball. OK, so if we first consider this uh, vertical, co uh, vertical collision between uh, the tennis ball and the basketball, one thing that's a little bit different from this uh, collision is there is an external force during the collision, and that's the force of gravity. Now, if you remember the impulse or the conservation of momentum, that was limited to cases where there was no external force acting on the system. So in this case, for us to use conservation of momentum, we have to assume that the impulse from the force of gravity during the collision is small. And if we make that assumption, then we can say that momentum will be conserved. Now we'll also assume that the collision between the tennis ball and the basketball is an elastic collision. And if we take both of those statements, uh, in a previous video I showed that for 1D collisions, you can get expressions, algebraic expressions, for the final velocities of the two objects that are going to collide. The objects can have different masses if you have conservation of linear momentum and conservation of kinetic energy. So we first note that after the collision, the basketball is moving upward, so that has a velocity v, but the tennis ball is still moving down, so that has a velocity negative v. The other approximation that we make for this problem is that the mass of the basketball m1 is much bigger than the mass of the tennis ball m2. So what we want to do now is simply substitute inside our algebraic equations for the final velocities of the basketball and the tennis ball after the collision. Again, we're working under the assumption that the mass of the tennis ball is negligible compared to m2. So if you look at our first expression, v1f, if you don't consider the impact of m2, uh, we're going to get basically m1 over m1 times v plus 0 equals to v. The second term is 0 because m1 is much, much greater than m2. So this results that at the after the collision, the speed of the basketball is basically the same as the initial speed. It's not impacted by the collision. 
Now if you look at the expression for V2F, you substitute inside. The first term becomes 2M1 over M1 times V. Again, we've neglected M2 here because it's smaller. And the second term, again, neglecting M2, you get minus M1 over M1 multiplied by negative V. Now, the reason you use negative V in that second part is because the tennis ball is moving down. And that, with respect to our coordinate system, is the negative direction. So at the end, you substitute everything through, we obtain a final velocity for the second object equal to 3V. So after the collision, the basketball is moving up at a velocity V, and the tennis ball is moving up with a velocity three times that of the basketball. So if we go back to our initial problem statement, we wanted to know how high that tennis ball is going to go with respect to the basketball. We saw in the initial video that the tennis ball certainly goes way higher than the basketball. So let's first look at the basketball. Let's find an expression for the height or the displacement in the vertical direction for the basketball if it has some initial speed v after the collision. The acceleration is given by the acceleration due to gravity and we know that's acting down. The initial velocity is v and that's acting up so we're going to denote that as positive v. Now if you want to know the max height for that basketball, um, one thing we know is at the maximum height we know that the final velocity has to be equal to zero. So let's write that down. Now all we have to do is use some of our kinematic equations in order to analyze the motion. One of those kinematic equations says that the final velocity squared equals to the initial velocity squared. Um, in this case it's going to be minus two times the acceleration times gravity because the acceleration is down so there's a negative sign that gets put into that equation. Again, we don't have to worry about the final velocity because it's going to be zero and the initial velocity is simply the velocity v of the ball. So at the end, the only unknown in this expression is the displacement delta y. Substituting everything in, we get an expression v squared divided by 2g. Okay. And now, you simply want to know how high the tennis ball is going to go now. Well, after the collision, we just solved and we found an expression for the uh, final velocity of that tennis ball, and we obtained 3v. So again, we're simply going to repeat the kinematics that we just did. We know the initial velocity. We know the acceleration is down. We use the same equation now in order to find what the maximum height is. So our initial velocity is 3v, so don't forget to square that term. And again, the only unknown in our expression is the displacement delta y. If you take everything inside, you'll obtain expression 9v squared divided by 2g. So if you compare that to the height of the basketball, the height of the tennis ball now has a 9 in front of it. So it's going to go 9 times higher than the height of the basketball. If you go back to the video, it looks actually looks like it goes a little bit higher. Um, but again, this is under all the assumptions that uh, we made under this. The, I mean, in reality, the mass of the basketball is not that much bigger than the mass of the tennis ball. So that was an approximation we made. But under these approximations, we get a factor of nine uh, between the maximum height of the basketball and the tennis ball. Well, there you have it, folks. If you have any questions, please just leave a comment down below. Subscribe to my channel. And if you ever have any physics problems that you're struggling with, visit www.physicsninja.org. Contact me. I'm going to help you out. Till next time.